When it comes to life on planet Earth, today we mostly link it to colors like green. And that's because of, obviously, plants. The amount of various photosynthetic organisms on the planet essentially turn our planet greenish from outer space. Something that can technically be seen from really far away. And so if somewhere out there there's another planet that potentially contains a lot of chlorophyll on its surface, in theory, we should be able to detect this by seeing specific reflections from the surface. Or at least that's how the theory goes. But when it comes to looking for exoplanets with potential life, maybe green is not the best color. Mostly because maybe green is actually a kind of a fluke that potentially happened on planet Earth, but might have not have occurred on other exoplanets that currently host life. And specifically here we're talking about colors like purple. Purple actually might be a lot more common. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss a relatively recent study that as always you can find in the description below that basically focuses on the idea of purple planets. Various alien planets potentially covered by huge amounts of life, but instead of being green, they're purple. Purple is the new green, as they mentioned in their study. And so let's discuss this idea a little bit more and also talk about why it actually kind of makes a lot of sense. Especially based on previous videos on the idea of purple earth hypothesis that we've discussed in some of the videos in the description. And so I guess maybe let's start with that. Purple earth hypothesis. Sometimes referred to as PEH. Or I guess P-E-H. A very intriguing hypothesis proposed by Shivaditya Das Sarma back in 2007. With the very simple premise. Back in the days, prior to the so-called Great Oxygenation that basically made chlorophyll-based life prominent on the planet, the entire planet was probably covered in slightly different bacteria. Possibly even bacteria based on something much simpler. Simpler than chlorophyll and much easier to produce. Things like, for example, retinol. Here's an example of a molecule of retinol. And though today retinol is mostly found in visual perception organs, such as basically eyes, some of the ancient microorganisms use it to convert light into various types of energy. And quite a lot of studies today actually suggest that most organisms 3 billion years ago very likely used retinol instead of chlorophyll. But intriguingly, retinol absorbs green light and emits purple light, pretty much the opposite of most of the plants today, which would make the planet look kind of purplish in hue. Here's actually probably the best representation of what this might have looked like back in the days. Or possibly like this if we consider the ocean life as well. And so in a lot of different microbial organisms, retinol becomes part of the microbial component known as bacterial rhodopsin. An important part of bacterial photosynthesis that acts as a kind of a proton pump, capturing the energy from the light and using it to move protons to then use it for chemical energy. Here's one of many examples of what it potentially looks like as a protein. And here's a really beautiful shot of all of this in action, basically showing us purple bacteria, also known as halobacteria, at various salt evaporation ponds in San Francisco. Although here's another picture showing us the bacteria as a much smaller sample. This was taken by Dasarma, the person who originally proposed purple earth hypothesis. And so billions of years ago, when life just started, it's quite likely that Earth looked very different. It was extremely likely much more purple. But then, because of evolutionary pressures, a different cyanobacterium started to evolve different, more complex means of producing energy. And this was, of course, the birth of cyanobacteria and chlorophyll-based photosynthesis. But the very unfortunate result of this was the production of oxygen. A lot of oxygen. So much oxygen that it actually turned the planet from reductive to oxidizing, which also resulted in the atmosphere and even water suddenly becoming toxic to a lot of different life. And so many of these ancient bacteria very likely faced their first extinction. So basically one of the first extinction events was probably caused by the Great Oxygenation event. This possibly happened at least 2.4 billion years ago. Interestingly enough, because of the sudden influx of oxygen and potential drop in a lot of other gases, including CO2, because of photosynthesis, this also resulted in a tremendously long glaciation event. In essence, the planet froze over and very likely stayed frozen for at least 300 million years, which very likely forced a lot of these bacteria and a lot of these archaea to adapt and to potentially migrate elsewhere, which is pretty much where we find them today, 
in a lot of remote conditions where there's not a lot of oxygen and where they have to collaborate with others to survive. But the point is that all of this very likely started with an oxygenic photosynthesis that did not produce oxygen and did not involve carbon fixation or even CO2. It was an extremely simple way of generating energy and it just required light. And so today it's kind of assumed that maybe this is actually the easiest type of photosynthesis to evolve elsewhere. Which basically makes this hypothesis an extremely important part in the search for extraterrestrial life. If we do find life somewhere else, it's extremely likely to be maybe purple. Because purple life is much easier to produce, purple life also survives much easier in a lot of different conditions, and most importantly, a lot of these purple bacteria, because of that retinol, can actually absorb energy much easier from stars producing infrared light and red light as opposed to the light we get from our sun. And so various planets found around red dwarfs, because they do receive mostly infrared and red light, would actually be perfect for this type of life to survive. And that includes so many different planets out there, simply because most stars in the galaxy are actually red dwarfs. And most exoplanets discovered that are kind of exciting are also orbiting red dwarfs as well. And so today scientists believe that these purple planets, if they do exist, they would very likely produce extremely specific signatures that can actually be detected by future telescopes, or maybe even telescopes we already have, we just don't really know what to look for yet. Which is precisely the main reason for this new study. Purple is the new green, biopigment and spectra of Earth-like purple worlds. An attempt to establish what kind of signatures we should be expecting from various planets containing purple bacteria and how we can find them using various telescopes, creating a kind of a database for different signs of life through the eyes of different telescopes. Now, out of approximately 6,000 confirmed exoplanets, only about 30 so far seem to be potentially Earth-like, where conditions might be similar to planet Earth and could maybe host liquid water. But in theory, we can actually have these purple bacteria around so many other planets, including the ones that don't seem to be Earth-like. And so here it's just a matter of looking at the spectra we see from these planets and then trying to see if anything here seems interesting, unusual or maybe just a little bit too purple. And so to make this happen, the researchers catalogued various colors of various bacteria we have on the planet, basically the ones using retinol, in order to identify various chemical signatures that could be reflected from different planets. And they essentially did this through practical means. They physically collected a lot of these purple bacteria in various types of environments, including shallow waters, coasts, marshes, and even deep sea hydrothermal vents, and essentially analyzed their colors. Surprisingly, there was quite a lot of variety – yellow, orange, brown, and even red – mostly because of different concentrations of retinol and a lot of other pigments. And a lot of these bacteria were even thriving in certain niches. Mostly because photosynthetic bacteria cannot survive in certain conditions. But here the researchers basically ask a simple question. Imagine this around some kind of a star system where they are the only organisms and the entire planet is their own. What would this planet look like? And though the answer is, we don't really know, this study provides some measurements of potential light fingerprints we could maybe look for. Here are just some of these observations based on the reflectance and the overall colors produced. And so here the researchers produced different types of reflectivity models, showing us what all of this would look like, even changing conditions like for example cloud cover. And by simulating various environments, they were able to produce different types of reflectivity maps. Or essentially something that the scientists in the future can look out for when looking at certain planets. And so if one of these unusual planets turns out to be purple and potentially hosts a lot of life, this study now provides us necessary tools to try to distinguish what we're looking at. Which is of course really important because it will dramatically increase our chances of discovering some kind of a unusual extraterrestrial life somewhere out there. If we actually do find a planet that has these unusual reflectivity bands similar to this study, it would be very difficult to explain it otherwise except for purple life. Kind of like on Earth 3 billion years ago. But at least for now, all of this is of course still kind of speculative and just based on what we see on our own planet. For all we know, maybe Earth is unique. And for all we know, maybe life never formed anywhere else. 
But that's of course the idea of rare earth hypothesis that you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description. Anyway, once there are some updates or once we discover something really intriguing, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.